7.43 in Trinidad and Tobago. Let's shift our focus now from the religious observance of the occasion of Diwali coming up on Thursday because we're joined now by producer Keith Israel to tell us more about uh, the redemption rhythm uh, coming out of Jam Productions. I sound like a DJ talking about it. His career work, by the way, includes Virgin Records, EMI Publishing, VP Records. He's worked with soca artists, gospel artists. Uh, the latter is the focus of this latest project featuring artists from Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, the United States, Martinique, uh, French-speaking territory right within our Caribbean region. Keith Israel, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Hi, good morning for you. Thanks for having me. You're more than welcome. So, so tell us about uh, the Redemption Rhythm and, and, and indeed, where, where can people access it? What, what, is there a specific event that's happening? Is it online? What, what's going on here? Well, actually, the Redemption Rhythm is um, a gospel-based rhythm which, but it's, all, it's a bit of a, a reggae style combined with the old style. Remember the days of uh, telephone love, that type of thing? So that is combined with that and a little bit of modern day kind of vibe. And um, it's the first of its type really in gospel music. And um, it's an album that can be found online on most of the, the, the known and popular um, platforms like your your Amazon and your Spotify and your Apple Music and so on and so forth. It's I, been I, um, I actually I actually remember Telephone Love. You know, it sounds so sweet on the line mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's um, right, but, that's right. <laughs> but, but, but the interesting thing about it is that with all, I mean, somebody like me who knows very little about these different rhythms and so on, and we have about this rhythm and that rhythm and the other rhythm and so on, what distinguishes it? What distinguishes it to you as someone involved in the business? What distinguishes mm -hmm. redemption rhythm in that sense? Hmm. Um, the, the, the fact that it is something that most people can relate to from different age groups. Because as you just said, you remember the telephone love and stuff. So from the time you, you hear it, it reminds you and it, it brings back those days to, to your memory. But for, even for the young people, it's something that's fresh and different for them because they have never really experienced something like that. And then to you hear in elements of what we call real music, you know? Um, so that in itself um, as a gospel um, platform is something that has not been done before in the Caribbean. And so that is what to me kind of stands out. And, and how long has the rhythm been, been out and what sort of reaction have you gotten so far? Oh, the rhythm um, was released uh, September 24th this year and the reaction has been phenomenal we have reached something like at least 42 countries already um, including places like russia uh, nigeria um, australia you know places that you wouldn't normally expect this type of music to reach but it has reached there and as far as putting it all together in the time of a pandemic with all of these uh, different artists, uh, you have uh, Mr. Diligent, you have Alicia Hope from the United States, Grace Gonzalez, uh, Corey the Prophet, Hamilton Brothers, Junior Dynamite, Luji from Martinique, uh, Keith Israel and Rico and, and, and quite a few others. Uh, tell us about the, the work that is involved in putting something like this together in the time of a pandemic. Well, um... It is a challenging project because, because of the fact that we, we have the, the, the time constraints with curfew and so on, you have to work within certain deadlines. And um, it's a lot of work, especially when you have to be dealing with artists all over the world. So in some cases, some of them had to record their vocals in other countries and then send it to me and then I match it up and you know, so on and so forth. So the process does take some time. It took us some months to get this project done. Um, and then eventually to have it totally ready, artwork, all the, the legal aspects, every aspect of it. So it took some months and it took some doing, but it's something that is a, a, a treasure in my heart. And what would it, you, you mentioned it took some months to put it together. What would have been the genesis of it? What would have sparked in your mind? To, to, to create this, the, the, this particular bit of work? <laughs> this actually came out of um, a friend of mine, uh, DJ Mickey, who used to be always harassing me. Um, Keith, when are you going to give me some kind of dance or kind of rhythm, something different, something, you know? 
And so he kind of pushed me to start to dig into the archives and find something that people used to latch on to before, that people used to really um, groove to back in the day and see how I could bring it forward and modernize it a little bit. And that's how, that's the genesis of it actually. That's how it, it came about. And when we are in, in the present time now, still with the, the, the situation of the pandemic, we're not too sure what's going to happen, how, how, how serious the situation is going to be going into 2022. It's obvious that COVID is not going away anytime soon. Has, has the use of the technology, the internet, social media, uh, all of the various tools, Zoom and, and, and other platforms, is this something that you see going forward? even whenever we reach something that we could say is actually beyond the pandemic. Is this going to be the new way of doing things, of reaching out and creating new work? Well, for you to be honest, I believe that this is definitely a platform that will continue forward um, because so many different organizations have been using this now, have been forced to use it. And they have also found that the returns have been quite great. The, um, the, the, the spread of listening audience has been tremendous. And uh, I don't think under normal circumstances, I could have reached as far in different territories as I have now without this type of um, platform to utilize. So to me, definitely moving forward, this is something that we, and I'm sure many other organizations will be using so in a way, we had to say kind of thank God for the, the, the COVID, the pandemic, because it caused persons or forced persons to go into another area that they would not have normally delved into. And, and, and I suppose, can, can, sure, uh, and I'll ask you to remind us as where people can access the rhythm be, be, before we conclude. But I suppose there's also, when you're talking about the entertainment business, is the, the mm -hmm. issue of the audience interaction. It's kind of like playing a football game or a cricket match and nobody watching. Mm -hmm. Even though you know that have millions or billions watching on TV, it's not the mm -hmm. same thing when you're playing and you have nobody around. So from the artist's point of view, what, what sort of feedback do you get in that regard? Well, that, that is a bit challenging for a lot of artists, I know, um, because you can't, you can't beat that interaction, that live interaction. And I know people have been suffering um, for lack of a better word, regarding um, live performances. And uh, so I know artists have been trying to use this other type of tool, the internet and so on, to try to see how best they could make a living and, and promote themselves and so on in the interim, because there's very little things that can be done per se right now until things open back up and they have the opportunity again to do what they, they love. Um, so I know it has been a challenging time for most artists. In fact, a lot of our, from what I understand, a lot of our soccer artists are abroad doing a lot of things. Why? Because now um, in different countries away, they have opened up certain things. So that there's a lot of, let's just say in Miami, I know that there was the, um, the carnival and so on. So a lot of things have been happening. So some artists can move on and, and benefit in that way, just waiting for us to reach to that stage. Well, well so you can tell the you can tell the Tabanka for Carnival with the amount of pictures that appeared in the media from Miami Carnival. You can you can get the sense that even even the media people, the editors or whatever, were having a real Tabanka uh, for for, for mm -hmm. Carnival. But Keith is real. Thanks very much indeed for taking the time to be with us uh, this morning. And before we go, just remind everybody again where they can access the Redemption Rhythm. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, well, it's been um, distributed globally by Vipal Music, which is a subsidiary of. VP Records in the United States, and you can find it on all the major platforms, Amazon.com, Spotify, um, iTunes, Apple Music, you know, all the different areas that you would normally download music, you can find it. So you can just Google it and, and they will come up with Redemption Rhythm. Keith Israel, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to be with us this morning. Thanks for having me again. Uh, you're more than welcome. Coming up towards 7.53 in Trinidad and Tobago, South Africa have just started their reply. Two without loss in the first over. They just need 85 to win uh, to beat Bangladesh after they routed them for just 84. As we go to the break, here are a couple of images captured by Curtis Moses on the Shagaramas golf course. And you can see, all, uh, again, the, those images which show this shaft of, not light, but shaft of shade 
uh, uh, and it's very interesting, this one going almost straight up as if there's something getting in the way of uh, the, the setting sun there. Very nice. And now, uh, for what our viewer in, for, from a viewer in Preparo, uh, it's a plague of locusts. And we know this is a major issue with many agricultural areas, rural areas in Central and especially South Trinidad. It almost seems to be a kind of a, a biblical type of image when people talk about this plague of locusts. Uh, just really descending on crops and devouring crops. It's a, it's a major issue in many parts of the world and apparently now in Trinidad and Tobago as we go to the break.